Hello, welcome to a, the first session or what you suppose could call week one of Active Inspirational. This is a guide on how to use Active Inspire um, from the very, very basic features of it, um, how to turn it on, etc., things like that, uh, right up into uh, more advanced features and settings and things like that. Um, the course itself is split up into five different sessions. Um, usually this would take place over five weeks, but uh, these can be done in any order, really. Um, well, I would advise you do stick to the one to five because it ramps up in terms of uh, difficulty and things like that. Um, but we'll start off with week one. Um, Time-wise, it varies, but these can take between an hour and two hours. It may even be shorter. Um, it depends how fast we, we move through these. And because it's recorded, obviously, you can pause and go back and things like that. So as you can see on the page today, we're going to have a look at um, a bit in the hardware um, and with some reference to some of the newer features or models that are out there and then talk about using Active Inspire, some hidden features and how to basically download flip charts and things like that. So we'll crack on. Um, so hardware is at a bit of a, a bit of a change at the moment. Um, the hardware that's currently out there is obviously um, split into two, two camps really. So you've got the what are called interactive whiteboards, which as you can see on the screen are things like this. Um, usually have a projector attached and things like that. They usually come with pens and there are of course other models out there um, uh, and other uh, varieties of interactive whiteboard, not just Promethean. There is also uh, what are called panels. Okay, this is an example of a remote there. Um, and again, you can do this or pause this in your own time. If you do have one of those remotes, um, and see what they do. I'm not going to go into that too much at the moment. Um, this would be a panel. This is a, a V6 panel. There's actually a V7 panel at the moment, but it just was to indicate that um, you know these are changing quite a lot. Now, that being the case, um, interactive whiteboards would have used Active Inspire an awful lot. Uh, it's actually the same for Active Panels, and um, folks that use Active Panels, especially in Northern Ireland, still use Active Inspire a lot, an awful lot, and as you know in Northern Ireland Active Inspire is available through my school and um, for those that are using Promethean boards or panels, so that's a, that's a panel. Really it doesn't matter what you're using, whether it's a panel or a whiteboard, you'll still be able to use these features and follow this course because it's to do with the actual program itself, which is makes it slightly different. Um, bit of housekeeping just before we start, this is Promethean support website, so I mean I suppose probably should have introduced myself. Um, my name is Stuart Montgomery. I am the educational consultant for Northern Ireland uh, for Promethean. And essentially, I, I was a teacher for 10 years. My job is a bit like it was when I was a teacher, is to sort of guide staff on how to use um, various pieces of technology. In this case, Promethean technology and Promethean software. So this is a website. It's really useful to have a, make a note of uh, because you can download Active Inspire at home, which is really, really crucial. So if you're at home now, which I dare say you might be, um, you can download Active Inspire at home for free and it would be the free version um, and get lots of free versions, uh, uh, free resources, sorry, for software and things like that. Um, but any bother, um, I'm going to put my email at the end of this and the contact details, you'll be able to see some information. Okay, so there are some differences, and I'm, I'm speaking to someone, really, it's just two people in Northern Ireland, teachers in Northern Ireland, and as such, there's a little bit of a difference there in terms of the technology and software that you have available to you. Um, in in um, my school, you have access to Active Inspire, it's how you'll access your programmes, at the time of speaking, which is the 18th of March, 2020, C2K have not updated the version of Active Inspire um, to the latest version um, that's been provided. Basically, it means you're about 11 or 10 versions out of date. So some of the things I'm showing you on the screen uh, may not be relevant whenever you come to watch it. Um, I know that if you were to get the newer version of Active Inspire, you'll see that it's not relevant either. So let me show you an example of this. So this is the dashboard. The dashboard looks like this. It's a bit antiquated looking. Um, you can get rid of the dashboard, as in stop it showing up whenever you turn on your computer every morning. Put Active Inspire on by tapping this, as in untapping that, I should say. Um, and you can see a list of your recent ones. If you look at my screen, it's slightly different. Um, my dashboard's here. And it looks a lot more slick, a lot more modern. There are lots of resources in the resource library as well, which you can have a look at. I've got a resource library. I'll just show you here. This is the website here, resourcelibrary.mypromethean.com, which is a good thing to have. 
Um, but just it's good to point that out. There are other things here, but I'm not going to those at the moment because I am aware that the teachers in Northern Ireland don't have access to those, but you could get access to the resource library if you wanted to. Um, there's there's two themes in Active Inspire, and depending on sort of what where you teach, you may use one or the other. So what's called what's called the primary look and feel is what we currently have. It has, um, as I say, quite uh, maybe cartoony logos or icons rather. It has colours or maybe a bit more primary focus. There is another version, and it's called the Studio Look, and it looks just like this. The, the primary difference is uh, how you access the pens. So on Active Inspire primary version if I click on the pens they appear at the bottom of the screen there and there's different thicknesses of pens different thicknesses of highlighters different thicknesses of rubbers you choose the one you want and you draw on the screen fairly simple um on the version of studio so active inspire studio theme uh, the pen is here and actually instead of you choosing a, a physical version of that pen or size you slide this little slide up and down to choose the size so uh, the other way is the page browser so the page browser is here and if you tap on it it shows you all the pages you have in your flip chart okay this is how i routinely would have organized my day going through it okay now this is great but the the studio version does it slightly differently it does a bit more like powerpoint it puts them down the side um it again is entirely up to you now how do you change? Well, it depends on what version of software you're using. If you're using the one that's currently on Active Inspire uh, on my school, you change like this, and I can't show you this, I can just show you a picture of it. Um, you go to your dashboard. Now, dashboard is available through there, or I think I believe it's view and dashboard. Now, my dashboard will look different to yours. Yours will look like this. You are going to click on configure, and then here launch next time using the studio look and feel. So whatever one you're currently in, so I'm currently in primary version, it'll say, lost next time using the other one. You click on that box, close that, turn Active Aspire off, open it back up again, and it'll be changed. On the new version, it's even easier, go to view, and down to here, it will either say studio or primary, depending on the one you're in. If you're in primary, it'll say studio. If you're in studio, it will say primary, excuse me, and you'll be able to jump in between there. Okay, and it's dead easy. Now, one of the first things I always cover uh, in training sessions is this little this little thing, uh, hint or feature. Um, we have a screen here, and we've got all our information in the middle, a bit like you would put it on a page on a desk. This would be our desk. This would be our page. Now, in reality, this is actually exactly the same as this. This this, this color here. So I can draw all over this like you would with anything. Okay, but I can also draw on here. There's actually no difference at all um, but if I was a pupil I would be inclined to stay within the confines of my page here I apologize for the wiggly writing I'm doing this on the mouse um, now we're losing about a third of our screen space there which is really quite annoying so what we want to do is we want to make that the same size and what I used to do was I used to use an auto shape and the auto shapes are here and you can choose between loads of shapes I used to use a rectangle and I used to make it white uh, with a white back, we white border. We'll come to auto shapes later on, and a white filling. Okay, and I used to draw these out just like that. Now, now I have a full page. The problem with that is, as you're about to see, um, if I am on my arrow and I'm either using a, ta a panel or a whiteboard, and I accidentally grab that, I can actually move things around a little bit. Okay, so I can move just like this. If you see what I mean? I can actually move things around, which I don't want to do in the middle of a lesson. Um, also, more relevantly, if I go to my next page, it hasn't done the same for the next page or the next page. If I open up a new document, even though I have a bigger page here, because I've changed the screen dimensions here, I still have that purple band down the side. So what I want to do is change it permanently. And to do that, I go to File and down to Settings and then Flip Chart and where it says World Color it's set to purple but I could change that to any color I want and you see here just like this including white and now it's changed to white and it's done for the next page and the next page any new documents I open up it'll do it for that as well so once you're done and you're done. Calibration another thing that's again maybe more relevant to older um, uh, interactive whiteboard and you can tell that because I've used a very old version of Windows here for the screen grab that's how long ago I made this flip chart um, but down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen you will see a little white uh, icon it might be uh, under a wee arrow you may have to go into it to find it but you right click on that go to calibrate 
and it will open up a white screen and you'll be able to tap, 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 just here, like this, tap, 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 uh, and open up a brand new, um, basically open up a brand new uh, screen. And that screen will allow me to calibrate. Um, I probably should explain what calibration means. Calibration basically means if you have a projector and an interactive whiteboard, um, they aren't in sync, as in they're maybe knocked out of line. So when you're writing here, for example, or drawing here, it's not following your pen. It's maybe doing loop-de-loops over here. Um, it needs calibrated. Um, with a panel, you really don't need to calibrate it. Um, so it's not really relevant to those folks, but it certainly is relevant for those that are using uh, interactive whiteboard so it's always good to point out how to do that okay uh, edit mode quite important and as we move through the weeks here or if you're looking through the, the sessions you'll find it's more and more relevant and um, edit mode what it essentially does is it allows us to make changes to things that are set in stone so by that I mean we can do certain things so we can lock certain items in place so we're, we're making a, a lesson here and i want to lock these text boxes in place so the kids can come along and wiggle them around so i'm going to click on my text box click on the menu and then click on locked so now that's locked i can't move it but if i then change my mind maybe i want to edit this so even if i go to my text it won't let me it'll allow me to do certain things but it won't let me move the text around see what i mean there i click and hopefully you can hear the click in there and it's not working if i go up here to edit mode tap on this what I can do is I can click it, I can move it around, I can grab things, I can do things with it, which is quite useful. Um, we can also do quite a lot of other things, but we'll get into those more in more detail when we get to those sections. And the toolbox, the toolbox or toolbar, depends what you want to call it, is this here. Now, first of all, you can move this, which is really relevant because I didn't know you can move it until, uh, well, not that long ago, actually. So depending on the orientation of your room, you may want to move it around. So if I want to move this over to this side of the, of the board, I grab the yellow bit and move it across. Okay, just like that. I'm going to keep it just over here for now. Um, what we're going to do is, we're not going to read all these out, you'll be glad to know, but you can read them in your own time. We'll cover all these as we get through different sessions. There you go, moving the toolbox. And as you can see here, you can also minimise the toolbar by pressing this button here. Okay, make it a bit smaller. Okay, uh, editing the toolbox. Um, you'll notice if I go back here just a second, just two jumps here. Um, this toolbar looks a little bit different to mine. There's actually some tools in there that actually aren't in here. Um, some are slightly different. So the tools are all accessible from here. So your tools. If I tap on here, all on the bottom, it shows me all my tools. Okay. Loads and loads and loads and loads of them. Now, there's way too many to fit into there, but we may, we may want to cherry pick some that we use quite a lot. So there are certain tools that I use a lot as a teacher that I wanted to use every day without having to go into my tools to find them. I wanted to have them in my toolbar. A good example of that would be the timestamp button. So the timestamp button looks like this. Rather than me go and search for it, I want to add the date and the time on my page. So I tap and it puts the date and the time on my page. Dead easy, dead quick, which is really, really nice. Um, which certainly helps. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to edit these. So we've got a view and customize. It brings up two boxes. One of them on the left is all the tools in Active Inspire. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of them. And on the right is essentially just the tools that are currently in my toolbox. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Okay. I'm going to grab one of the tools I want. We're going to put in the, tap the clock. Tap on the clock and go to add. And as you can see from the right hand side or left hand side, sorry, and the right hand side box, the clock has been added into our tools. Now, if we click on the clock and we go to either move up or move down, we can move the clock around. Hopefully you can see it there moving or move down. And we can rearrange things and set it basically any way we want. I could remove it from the toolbox by clicking on it and going to remove. And it just puts it back into this box here. That's a really useful way of organizing things, things like that. Um, drawing. Drawing is something that happens obviously an awful lot of time. You won't be drawing, you'll actually be writing notes with your pen or your finger depending on what you're using. Um, we can draw of different thicknesses as I illustrated at the start there. We can also rub them out and things like that. So all the things you'd expect to be able to do with any piece of software. What we can also do is we can also fill them in a bit like Microsoft Paint. We can fill things in just like this. Dead easy. No messing around. Okay. Um, we can also fill in the page colour. So I've got, if I use a red here, for example, and I tap on the page, you can see we've filled in the page colour here. Even though we've copied and pasted these two items in, we can click and click to fill these in, which is quite useful as well. Um, 
if we, and this is an example of what I meant at the very start when I said it's a bit shorter because we're not doing this, I would have usually got people to do it. So anytime you see this, feel free to do it along if you if you want to download this. I, I will make it available, this, this flip chart you want to do it along with me, you, you certainly can. Um, but this is something I would show you to do. So draw, draw a simple shape such as this, sort of thing there, and then fill it in with any colour you like. So fill it in there, something like that, okay? Um, but it gives you, and you draw a gapless shape, you'll see what happens. So one with a gap in it, so this one here. If I draw in this one, you'll see what happens. It fills it, it spills out, like water, it spills all out, which is quite useful to see. Um, choosing your own colour. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, when you click on your pen tool, you get different colours. And you get a band of colours from red to white here, and then you get four. Now, as you see above there, Initially, there'll be four white boxes, and mine are all different colours. And the reason that is, if you right click with your mouse, and if you've got a pen, as an interactive whiteboard pen, there should be a wee button on it that'll let you right click. If you're on a panel, you just hold with your finger, tap and hold, um, and you'll bring up this option here. Just you can see it up here. A whole other swatch of colours, and then these two ic icons here. One of them is a colour wheel, and one is a dropper. And I'll show you how these work now. So I've got uh, Sully and Mike here. And what we want to do is we want to uh, right click on any one of these, doesn't matter which one, and go to, first of all, the, the wheel, and you can see we can choose different colours. So I want to try and get Sully's colour there. So that's quite close, isn't it? Press OK. It puts it here. Let's see how close it is. If we draw on it, that's bang on. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, if we wanted to do the same for Mike, but we just couldn't find the exact colour for Mike, so we'll, beside Mike, we'll right click, and we'll go to our dropper this time. And the dropper, as you can see, from just here, or colour picker, whatever you call it, it will scan over what we're looking at. So in this case, there's the colour of Mike, and I can tap, and that's the exact same colour as Mike there. I can give him a wee horn if I wanted to. What I could also do is I could also use this to fill different colours in. You see how that would change. So I can use and manipulate the colours quite well, so flip between these two colours, um, just like that, which is quite cool. Um, it gives you a bit of an option of uh, trying to grab colours from different things and it can be very useful later on. Um, on the in, on the toolbox, one of the tools is the pointer or the arrow tool. So the arrow tool, what it does, it allows me to grab objects. So I'm going to grab these two objects here, okay? And what I want to do is I want to grab this and manipulate it, change it in some way. So I'm going to grab these little circles here and I'm going to stretch them and pull to change the size um, and the shape that I have here. I can also move them around as you can probably tell. If I click on the icon as well, I press my little two-sided arrow, I can rotate them, just like this, okay? Um, now, there, is, there are other options as well, which we will come to, but we're not going to do them at the moment. Um, we're gonna go to our next page. Now, if you're on a computer, a PC, I should say, you can grab specific objects, and this is very useful whenever you're creating content. So I want to just grab the red shapes. I don't want to have to do it individually. So if I hold control, and I tap on the red shapes, and then I can let go of control, it'll grab just these. That's just so when I'm rearranging objects, when I'm making a lesson, and just a good thing to mark down. And if you're using, say, um, a Mac, it's command. It's the command key, okay? Uh, text tool. T for text, I want to type, you type away down at the bottom where you can see it here, but you can also see it here, and it's exactly like Microsoft Word. Font choice, font size, bold, italic, underline, alignment, font color, all that sort of stuff you'd expect. It's just writing on it really. Now again, that's something you'll probably be doing, not in front of a class, but before a lesson begins. Um, and another thing you'd be adding in is images. So copy and paste is the same in any other program. Right click, copy, right click, paste. Okay, now, that's something you'll be using a lot more later on in different sessions. And um, picture. So I mentioned about when you click on the picture, you've got these yellow sort of orbs or yellow circles. Um, you've also got these icons along the top. And no matter what I click on, whether it's a picture, a text box, an icon, I get the same options. So I'm going to grab my Titanic here and I'm going to stretch it out. And I'm going to need to stretch it a little bit more just out here. So that looks way better in terms of like having a background. It's a bit more interesting to look at. So. What I've got here is I've got the background, which is Titanic, but it's a bit hard to see. Now, I could change the text color of each of these to something a bit brighter. But although that looks fine, it's going to take me time. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back 
and actually click on my background. And as you can see, it grabs the background there. It's grabbing, you can see it's grabbing it because the yellow orbs are collected or selected, sorry. And you've also got your icons along the top. And the one we're looking for is this one here. It looks like, uh, I suppose, a checkers board with the little orange in front of it. If you click and hold, you get like a thing you can drag. And we can drag it right down to completely transparent. So if we bring it down up here and down to here. Okay, so something like that would be actually kind of perfect because I can see the writing a lot clearer now and the background's still there as well. And that works with anything. So I can set up an activity for pupils when I'm teaching and actually reveal things. So let's pretend that these are, well, these are, are the names of these items or these um, options. But before my lesson starts, I click on each individually and I make it completely opaque. And actually, that was not quite opaque. There you go. Or transparent, I should say. They're already opaque. Um, so what's good about that is I can then reveal the answers because the answers are all still there. They haven't disappeared. I know they're there as a teacher, but the pupils don't. So I'm saying to a pupil, okay, what is that icon there? What is that? They're going to tell me, oh, that's the move around button. So I can reveal, yes, it is. What's that one? Oh, that's the rotate button. Yes, it is. What's that one? That's the open menu button. Okay, just that one there. What's that one? That's the transparency or lower transparency. And what's that one? Oh, that's the group, uh, group objects button. You can reveal things, which is quite nice. Another example, that would be this. I could reveal this, and it's revealing area. that We looked at various areas and houses people belong to and things like that. Um, drag a copy is very useful as well and something I use quite a lot. Um, we've got two objects here on the page. We've got a tick and an X, and I want to grab the tick or the X and put them... Put them uh, beside certain things that are correct or incorrect, but I want the pupils to do it. I don't want to have to do it myself. I want the pupils to be up and interactive and using the board or using the panel um, with this software. So we come along and we go to our, our green tick there. The problem is if I want to copy and paste that, I have to click on the menu and go to copy and then go up to edit and then go to paste, which is about three or four steps that pupils just won't do. So before my lesson starts, I click on my icon, I go to my menu, and I go to drag a copy. Now to make a shortcut, you can actually right click if you're able to. I'm going to drag a copy if it's a bit quicker. That means when pupils come along on the board or on the panel and they click and drag, we can make as many of these as we want. And that gives us a lot of options when I want to, I suppose, showcase how pupils can put a correct answer or an incorrect answer on the board. A good example would be something like this. You know, we're doing something like maybe even mark scheme in the school and you want to highlight these. Things like that. You can make these all drag a copy. Um, money is a very popular one as well, which people use. So it's put up on the board whenever we were doing activities on money. People come along, they drag one of these out, and we can make money and count them up. Okay, which is quite nice. And we can add this up. A little tip here is when we've added all this up and we want to move on to the next sum or question or you know response. We don't want to have to individually delete them all, especially because it's a bit of a pain. Click on it, go into menu, go into cut for every individual one. If you come along here and press this one, this is the reset button. Um, looks kind of like a red recycling symbol. When you press on this, it will reset it for you there and it will go back to the regular page. And you can rinse and repeat, which is quite nice. This is another example of something we could use um, when it comes to uh, drag a copy. We could use these, these little coins here, we can drag these. Okay, and move them around, place them on different points. Then want to drag a copy, want to click on it, go to drag a copy, okay, and then we come along and oh crumbs, um, we can just drag them out like that, okay, which is quite nice. Just like that, different points, different places throughout the throughout the thing. Um, the other thing you can use dry copy is this. This is a brilliant block. So good for um, behavior management systems, things like that. Just drag these out and you can change the colors of these and change the names of the tigers or the names of the groups of the tigers, lions, bears, etc. Whatever you're using really in your class, um, you can use it like this, which is really cool. Kids love doing this because they get to do it themselves, which is quite nice. And we can drag anything really. These are objects I've made using Active Inspire, using different shapes. So we could drag out shapes. It's good for uh, capacity. And we want to do stack on top of each other like you know one leader is four of these and one leader is also one of these and we're balancing things quite a nice activity to use as well so there's an awful lot you can do with it and again there's an example of things you're using to drag a copy but i assume you're fully aware of how that works 
Um, the auto shapes, I was using earlier some auto shapes. Auto shapes are found here. Um, just a couple of things to cover with those. Obviously, some are fairly basic instructions, and you can go ahead and read these as, as I'm speaking, but you've got lines and you've got some shapes. So, and you've also got a few more if you press these arrows here to show you. Um, where people get confused is this part at the bottom. And hopefully, I've underlined how it is quite simple, but I can understand the confusion. You have two levels or two lines of color. One is the color of lines and shapes and one is a different one. So this is the color of the, the outside line of a shape. So for example, if I choose a star, okay, and I want to have the outside line be black, the little stars here indicate, and it's stars friendly, by the way, so I can pick an arrow and it will still be stars, um, how thick that outline is. So we'll, do, we'll go to limit the three out of four, and it's black. This line of color is the inside, the filling of the shape. So we'll go to green, if I drag here, and if I show you the difference, if I go to a 2 out of 4 and change the outline to red and the inside to blue, it's like that. Two different types of star. And that works with any shape there, but it's quite useful to know that. Um, page browser. Page browser just here. I've been looking at the page browser, as you've probably seen there. And what I've done here is a bit of a DIY thing, which I'll show you anyway. I've placed four pages in the wrong order. You can see them just here, 4, 1, 3, 2. We can move pages around. So the reason I... You just click and drag here, just grab it there, around there, and there we go. Four, three, two, and oh, come on now. There we go. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Now, and the reason that's just was you could have an activity, say on page three, and you need to move it around to later in the day. That can be really relevant. Um, if you need to move or could your thing around a little bit, it can be really, really important. Um, Wiping the screen, uh, rather than you having to wipe everything, so you've written tons and tons and tons and tons of content that the people have given you, blah, 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 and you want to get rid of it all really quickly, rather than you having to use the rubber and rub, 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 because that's going to take ages and ages and ages, you press the little uh, annotate, which is the spray bottle, and go to clear annotations, it'll get rid of just the annotations. I think I've got an example of something here, for example. So I have lots of stuff on here. My spray bottle, clear annotations, we'll get rid of just the annotations. If I go back a second, press, press the spray bottle again, clear objects will get rid of any objects. So an object is a shape, it's a picture or a text box. So in this case, that's pretty much everything on this page. So when I tap on this, I will just be left with the grid and the actual writing. Just like that. I can go back again, I can get rid of just the grid. If I want to get rid of a grid as well, I'll be left with just that. Or I can get rid of the entire thing. Clear the entire page, just like that, okay? Um, we can write on PDFs as well, so PDF I've inserted, we can add a PDF on here and we can write content in here, and then we can wipe it later on for the next lesson or next year or next class, whatever we're doing, and we can have that in there as well, okay? So I'm getting towards the end here, believe it or not, so we're jumping around a little bit. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of things. The one I want to show you is this. Um, this is something to do with uh, the grid. So we've got a, a grid on here, and we'll cover grids in, in later weeks. But I wanted to showcase the fact these icons, these are uh, animated GIFs, can be added just like any object. You can copy and paste them in. But um, they, you'll notice that these actually stick into the correct uh, spot. See, so jump into a spot here, okay, just like this. And so what I want to do is I want to get these to, uh, how, how do they get these to stick in? So when you right click and you go to something called the grid designer, and we'll talk a lot more about that later on, but one of these things says allow snap. And what that does, that allows these to stick into place. So they'll snap automatically into one of these squares. That's really useful when you want to encourage kids to put them into the correct box and things like that, or a correct box, and can be used for lots of different stuff. I mean, here's an example of using knots and crosses. That sort of thing, things like that. So it's something you could use if you want to as well. And as I say, we'll be looking at a bit more of those sort of things later on or, or as we'll move forward. Um, this is something that gets talked about quite a lot when, it, when I'm covering these. It's to do with locks and layers. Um, I'm not really going to take you through this part. And rather, I'm going to show you what it looks like maybe more in practice. So well, I've got uh, some writing here. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to make what's called a magic box. So to do that, I'm going to put a, an object in the screen. I'm going to put a star in the screen. Now, as you can see, my little blue star here, it is above my text. And there's three layers, net, above, 
in the middle and below, or somehow it's called top, middle and bottom really. And what I want to do is I'm going to click on the star and go to the menu. I'm going to go down from down to reorder, oops, and I'm going to go down to bottom layer. I'll just see, there you go, it pops underneath my writing. I could do middle or I could do top. Um, instead, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to show you how to make a magic box. So I've got a hat and I've got a little rabbit. All right. At the moment, the rabbit is sitting on top of the hat because I want the rabbit to be inside the hat and I'm going to pull him out of the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the rabbit, right click, go to reorder and go to bottom layer and the rabbit's behind the hat now. So I can pop him in just behind the hat. Brilliant. Now when I come up to my board and I go to grab my rabbit out of my hat, that happens. And that happens because the hat's still an object. There's no reason why the hat shouldn't be grabbed. So what I need to do is I need to stop the hat from being grabbed. And do, to do that, I click on the hat, I go to my menu, and I go down to locked. And locked is a little padlock there. Now, if you have an item that's locked, let's say here, and this item is locked, and you try and grab it, nothing will happen. But if you've got anything below that item, and you try and grab it, Nothing will happen to the top there, but it will grab this item, the items below it. Example would be this, locked item, the hat. I try and grab it, nothing will happen, but if anything's below it, it will bypass it and grab the hat here. And everyone cheers. Yay. Um, so, how can we do that in practice? We've got a picture here of a bag. Got it off Google Images. Okay, I think that's a search mystery bag. Now, we can find out what layer it's on by checking here. So clearly it's below these, these, these here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to reorder. We're going to go to top layer. Double check, yep, that works there. And um, we're now going to grab these, okay? And you'll notice what I'm doing. I'm not grabbing these numbers. They're all individual numbers. I'm not grabbing them individually. I'm actually grabbing them in big groups. And to do that, I click and drag um, what's called a gray square. And to do that, you can grab multiple objects at a time. So I'm grabbing these. Okay, and I want to make sure I not grab the hat or the, the bag. So maybe I have to move the bag out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to just grab this here. Hopefully that's it there. No, nope. just like that. So we're moving the bag slightly out of the way. There we go. And pop it just behind here. Now the problem again, as I showed you, if I try and grab something from that bag, I pull the bag by mistake. So I need to lock the bag in place by right clicking on the bag and going locked. And then when I pull a number out of the bag, it pulls a number just out of the bag. It's a really cool little example of how that works. Helps to make quite a few different things. You know, I can make one like this, where I'm pulling numbers out of the bag like this, or even pulling objects out of a, a locked container. Just like, oops, like that. Gives you quite a few options, okay? Um, the next thing to look at is hidden. So hidden features. There's something we'll be looking at, um, I think it's in session four, but it's to do with uh, an action. So you can give certain actions to certain things in Active Inspire. Um, and rather than going into too much detail, I'm going to show you how it works, show you an example of it, and then come back to it much later on. But I wanted to sort of give you a bit of a tease and show you what it does. So give example would be here. I've got true or false, and I've written out these four statements, okay? And some are true and some are false. Now, if I tap on the one, I can reveal the answer. So I can reveal those answers in place, which is quite quite cool. A bit like when we had our um, four icons and we were showing, like, revealing these. Now, how it works is if I click on, for example, these are all separate text boxes, by the way, number three, okay? And I go to my menu and I go to Action Browser because we're going to give this an action. And each, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of actions, but this one's called Hidden, okay? So we're going down to H for Hidden. Thankfully, it's alphabetical. Go to Hidden here. And it says, you can probably see this screen grab there, um, target. So if I press my three dots, I can choose a target. And my target for this one is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be true, the word true. I'm not quite sure where it is. Uh, it's probably that one. Okay, so press OK and press apply changes. And then we can test it. Yep, there it is there. Oops, it is it. There it is there. So I tap and I can reveal this on and off, on and off, on and off. And that works with anything really. I can reveal anything in that way. I could do the same for this. How this also works is this here. So I can reveal these objects. So these objects are set to be hidden by tapping on them, which is really quite cool. And again, we'll come back to that in later weeks, but it's quite useful to be able to see how that works. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you today um, is how to add in 
um, and a lot of other stuff here by the way, but we're not covering it just today, um, is how you add in music files. So on my desktop here, if I go to insert and media, I can find somewhere where I've got a bit of music. Now I'm not going to do that now because I've already added it in. But when I find a bit of music and I press open, it opens it into here. Now if I press this, you probably won't hear any sound, I don't think, but it will play music, okay? And I can turn the music up and down, pause it, move it forward, stop it, um, but I can do that there. Um, and then I can carry on with that that activity. Um, what I'm gonna do is put this link up here. Now, there's my uh, work email and work phone if you want to contact me. This link, as you see this Google Drive link, will bring you to a folder, um, an online Google Drive folder. And in there, you will find this video, hopefully, but also you'll find the, the actual flip chart that I'm using if you want to work through it, as well as the other ones from these sessions. Um, they're in a folder called Stramillis Activities or Stramillis Lecture Series, I believe it's called, and you can work your way through those. Um, any questions or queries, let me know, and I'll be uploading the rest of these as we move forward. Thanks very much.